Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, we are gonna be taking a look at the Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. This is a pretty sharp printer. So let's take a closer look at this Ender 3 S1 Pro. Now I did do a video on the S1, and that'll pop up in one of those corners. You can take a look at that if you want. But before we go over the details on this, what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at what are some of the important and not so important differences in the two printers. Okay, so the first big difference is the what the bed is made out of. Now, it still has this great magnetic bed. This is fantastic. Uh, but this one has a more texture to it, and this one is a PEI textured bed. So I have found adhesion to be just off the charts. I mean, you've got to take this thing off and pop it and then use a scraper to get some of the stuff off, like the, uh, the brim if you used it, or a skirt or that type of thing. So the upgraded material not only helps with adhesion, of course, and it's also going to last longer than a standard polycarbonate bed, which is on the S1. So there'd be one of your, your bigger differences. But the biggest difference is with this hot end. And of course, this is a direct drive, which is fantastic. I love that most printers now are just direct drive. And the cool thing about this direct drive is it now can go up to 300 degrees. This is an all metal hot end, comes standard. So you can not only print, you know, of course, uh, PLA and your uh, PETG and your flexible materials, but you could print anything higher, any kind of special uh, filament, like a, a, a carbon fiber filament or anything that takes those higher temperatures, you can do with this one right out of the box, no upgrade necessary. And it comes with this CR touch, which is pretty much like a BL touch, and it's got a nice metal tip to it, so it's not gonna bend or break. I've had that happen. These metal ones are great, so you can get a nice level first layer every time. So now that we looked at two of the, the major changes in this printer. Uh, of course, this hot end, fantastic, uh, that it can go up that high right out of the box. Let's look at some of the minor changes. So uh, I guess the, the, the most minorest of change that matters, at least to me at least, is the uh, tool drawer. So the tool drawer is bigger in the S1 Pro. To me, all that means is that means I'll have even more space when I take a tool out of there and I never put it back. I wish I could. I never can seem to remember, and then I'm gonna be searching everywhere, but it is bigger, and I'm gonna to try to use it more. Now, the second thing, which is, of course, more important than that, is the, um, is the screen, the LCD. It's a 4.3 inch color LCD, but it's a touch screen, where the S1 uses the sort of knob selector. Uh, I like the UI on this. It's really clean, easy to use, and uh, I like it better than knob selector. So, right out of the bat, that is a pretty good one as well. And to round out some of the features, we've got this great LED up here, simple on off switch. And then up top, we've got our filament runout sensor. And then we've got some tensioning knobs for both axes and some great large knobs here for manually leveling your print. And of course it has auto bed leveling, which is an awesome, awesome way to level the board. So like I mentioned, this new hot end, being able to go up to 300 degrees, to me really makes all the difference if you're wondering, should I get a 3SI uh, or should I get the SI Pro? Uh, I of course lean more towards the Pro because I want to have the most versatile printing machine that I can have. If I want to print a polycarbonate, if I want to print something that's a, a composited material, like a carbon fiber or something that's got metal in it, I like to be able to do that, no upgrades. And that's the other thing. Let's say you're a first time buyer and you're looking to get a printer and you don't want to do all these upgrades. You've watched the upgrade videos and you're like, oh my God, I don't, I don't know how to do any of this. Um, you get this thing, it comes out of the box and I am not kidding you, this thing had 12 screws. It might've even been 11 and I'm rounding up cause I like an even number, but it might've had just 11. I'm gonna say 12 just to go with it. 12 screws put this thing together and that was it. And with that, I get this magnetic bed, the PEI, I get this great hot end, filament runout sensor, dual Z axis, I get uh, tightening knobs, I get this neat little handle here for some reason, so I don't have to touch the hot end or touch the hot bed. Uh, I get some great wheels here that I can lower and raise my bed. 
this LED. It's a really great printer if you're just starting out and you don't want to do any upgrades. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these prints that you can see around the table here that I made. Now, the great thing about a printer like this, like I said, with, with the ranges that you can go, is you can print almost any material. So, uh, I unfortunately didn't have any carbon fiber on hand, but I did go ahead and print uh, some different things that I did have here in the shop. Now, first off, of course, just some PLA. And the neat thing about this is, and you can see that the tolerances are pretty tight on this machine. This is from Clock Spring. This is his uh, AAA battery um, dispenser. And printed it, one piece, flips open. I can turn this dial here to spit out batteries. It's super clean. The orientation was like this on the bed and it just printed out. I popped it off the bed and it opened and closed and it looks fantastic. I was really, really happy with this because I put it at a 0.2 millimeter height just because, you know, I wasn't, it didn't need to be crazy smooth, but I'm still really, really impressed with it. This was PLA, it kicked it out no problem. Here's another PLA print. This is a headphone stand, for, again, from Clockspring. He's in Patreon. Uh, check out his Patreon, links will be below. Just really neat files. If you watch a lot of 3D channels or a lot of 3D TikTok uh, channels, I actually have a TikTok channel, you can check that out. Um, you can see a lot of people print his stuff because it's so visual and it's so neat. So this is like a snake type thing. Again, printed out on the ender here in this orientation. I can't actually remember how it was on the bed, but it was some somewhere on the bed. And all these things move and you can just sort of set it up like this and hang your headphones on it. It takes up a lot of space, but it's pretty cool. And the filament here that I use is all from Zealtech. Uh, I like using that stuff. Um, it is a pretty neat filament. Now, I did get to use some, uh, you know, different types of materials that I'm always excited about because having a direct drive, and that is some uh, Cheetah, uh, Ninja, Ninja Tech, a cheetah and you can see this stuff is crazy flexible uh, ninja tech stuff is really really flexible I don't have this printer dialed in for it I just use the standard and the can sort of um, TP this isn't TPU this is a more more flexible than TPU but I use the uh, standard settings in Prusa slicer I got to go in there and dial it in to get some of the stringing away but at the same time right out of the box to be able to print like these four wheels if you were doing any kind of work for the RC or anything like that. This has got really low infill, so you can see that it's super flexible, but of course you can make it even a little bit more rigid. But again, when you've got a hot end that can print different types of uh, materials, it's pretty neat. And of course, the direct drive makes being able to print this type of material, flexible material, possible. Let's take a look at this guy over here. I love how this thing looks, and you might have guessed that this is from Clock Spring as well. I cannot remember the name of this vase, but it is awesome. <laughs> and this is actually uh, Pet G. And I gotta tell you, I have a little bit of a problem printing Pet G uh, sometimes. I, you know, I don't know if I'm getting the temperature off or something, uh, but this is perfect. It is printed in vase mode, and the layer lines are so tight in this. It is, it is beautiful. First time right off the bat using this, uh, and it just handled it like a champ. I was really, really excited to see this thing come out because it looks pretty neat. I probably, who knows, I'll probably keep it in the shop and just throw change in it, I don't know. But um, uh, I dig how this thing looks. So we've talked about the differences and the similarities between the two, but the one that matters most to a lot of people, and to me, I mean, let's be honest, is the difference in price. So what are we looking at? Uh, if you go to, uh, this, the day that I shot this on Creality site, they had the Ender 3S1 for $330 and the Ender 3S1 Pro for $440. So you are looking at $100 more. But this is what you've got to decide. Do I want to print, uh, have the versatility to print pretty much anything out of the box that I don't have to do any crazy upgrades? The worst thing that's going to happen is if you buy one 
and you say the three, the three um, S1 and thinking, oh, I'm never going to. And then all of a sudden you want to print something that's carbon fiber or something like that. And then you've got to upgrade the hot end. If you think you might be printing that, that type of stuff, I would definitely go for the Pro. Uh, I do like the textured bed with the PEI as well. Uh, I like the touchscreen, but the big draw to this machine is that new Sprite hot end that will do those high temperatures. So again, it all depends. Money-wise, I say it's totally worth it. I dig this printer and I will definitely be using it much more. Now, if you're interested in picking this printer up, links are below to where you can get it. You'll also see links to Clockspring, where, where I get my filament from, and anything else that's on the channel. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click like and subscribe and hit that little bell. It helps out the channel and that helps me make more videos. All right, guys, take it easy. I will see you in the next one.